What's up, Cubs fans? The Cubs beat the Giants yesterday by a score of 6-5, to five, their first true series win in over a month. Kyle Hendricks, great. Dansby Swanson, great. Ian Happ, great. We're going to talk about all of that and more on the Cubs baseball channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Get in the comments section. Let us know how you're feeling about the professor after his first start since May 17th. Here is your invitation to our show. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? Back-to-back -back wins for the Chicago Cubs to get a series win over the San Francisco Giants. My name is Anthony Pasquale for the Cubs Baseball Channel on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. Lot to get into today, so we'll get right into it. Um, with yesterday's win over the Giants, Cubs victorious, 6-5 to five, the final. Back-to-back uh, -back wins, their first true series win since May 10th to 12th over the Pittsburgh Pirates. So it's been a month coming. Obviously, they had that two-game sweep of the White Sox in early June. This is their first three-game series win since then, and their first one at home since a little bit prior against the Brewers to close out April and start May there's a lot to talk about in this game, so we can kind of go step by step, but I think it has to start right here with Ian Happ. He's been the guy um, that has really turned this offense around as of late, and obviously the Cubs still have some work to do, especially situationally with runners in scoring position, but Ian Happ is, is on a great stretch. We talked about during his struggles how streaky he is. Um, well, he's in one of those peaks right now, without a doubt. He had another pair of hits yesterday, a homer and a double. The slug is through the roof right now with Ian Happ. Um, he's hitting 238 on the season with nine homers and 38 runs driven in. But if you look a little bit further, his last seven games, he's hitting 435 with three homers and eight RBIs. In the last 15 games, he's hitting 308. So, a little bit bigger of a sample size, and he's still been one of the Cubs' best hitters. His runs created plus is now higher this season than his career average, which means he's performing better than you would expect. Um, the issue is with Hap, it's always been inconsistency. You don't get this for 162. But if he could put these stretches to last a little bit longer than a week and have it be, you know, half a month to a month, two months, you're looking at an all-star caliber guy, and that's why he was named an all-star in 2022 um, and why, if he keeps this up, he might be here in 2024. But Ian Happ has been a big reason why the Cubs offense has finally started to turn it in the right direction. Um, and another guy who is starting to hit the ball well, Dansby Swanson. Him and Ian Happ went back-to-back -back in the fourth inning. Um, Dansby Swanson's second straight game hitting a home run. So Dansby Swanson starting to get a little power back as well. That was his eighth of the season. He drove in three runs yesterday. Um, and Dansby Swanson starting to get back in the right direction as well. Um, he's still only hitting 214, but the power numbers are starting to look good. And it's because he's starting to focus on center and right field. As a right-handed hitter, being able to command the ball up the middle and the other way gives you so much confidence at the plate. And Dansby Swanson has hit opposite field home runs in back-to-back -back games. Now, his last 15 games, he's hitting 250, so it's still not perfect, but the power numbers seem to be back. Um, three homers, nine RBIs over that stretch, and he's striking out a little bit less, uh, which is a good thing. Putting the ball in play, hitting it hard taking it the other way. That's what you want to see out of Dansby Swanson and the rest of your lineup. Um, for me, one of the biggest concerns right now on the team is Cody Bellinger. He's a guy that has been really good um, for his career, obviously, had a really strong season for the Cubs last year, um, got MVP votes, and ever since he came back from the rib injury, after that first week when he was tearing the cover off the ball, he just hasn't looked super comfortable at the plate. It would be my assessment. Um, swinging early in counts, big swings, fouling balls off that he would usually drive, and getting a little bit um, defensive at the plate. Uh, 
kind of grounding them in the opposite way just to put it in place, similar to stuff we saw Nick Madrigal do. Uh, Bellinger did that to hit into a double play with the bases loaded yesterday. Um, he's been coming up in a lot of big spots, and I still think he is your best hitter. He's just got to start driving the ball a little bit more, and that's something we'll certainly be keeping our eyes on. Nico Horner was in the leadoff spot yesterday. He had a pair of hits. Hap, Swanson, and Bush also a pair of hits as well. Michael Bush quietly putting together a really strong month of June. His batting average is up to 266 on the year. And across the last seven games, he's hitting 435. The last 15 games, 366. So Bush is quietly, especially when he's been in that six and seven spot, really starting to hit the ball uh, very well for this Cubs team. So while Mike Talkman on the injured list is a loss, it should mean Michael Bush in the lineup a little bit more consistently with the way he's been playing. That is certainly a good thing and kind of buried the lead guys. Kyle Hendricks yesterday was insane. He was so good. I don't think you could have expected anything better out of him. His first start since May 17th. Um, and obviously he was pulled from the starting rotation with an injury and moved to the bullpen because Frankly, he had been extremely bad. An ERA over 10, 42 earned runs in like 36 innings. Something ridiculous. Something not what a World Series champion, top two Cy Young finisher, NL ERA leader type of guy would give you. Um, and a lot of people, I think Mick and myself included, thought we could be heading toward the end of the road with Kyle. Uh, we have consistently said on this channel we're not rooting for that, but he needs to produce to stay at the big league level. Well, he produced in a big way yesterday, five and two thirds innings, took a no hitter into the sixth, only allowed two hits, one earned run. And it came on um, an interesting play that Dansby Swanson tried to and almost was able to turn a double play. He struck out eight guys. The swing and miss stuff was there. The pinpoint accuracy that we know Kyle Hendricks for was there. And it was great to see Kyle look like the professor once again. I'm curious to hear all of your thoughts about how Kyle pitched. Moving right along here, unfortunately, the bullpen woes continue for this team. A 6-1 to one lead felt finally comfortable enough to not sweat, take your foot off the gas a little bit. Well, nope, the bullpen gave it right back. Mark Leiter Jr., really bad command. He gave up two hits, or excuse me, one hit, and two walks loaded the basis in the seventh inning. So, of course, the Cubs opt to go with uh, Tyson Miller with the bases loaded. Excuse me, the eighth. With the bases loaded, Jorge Soler turns on a pitch, blasts it into the left field bleachers. And just like that, that six to one lead was right back to six to five. And, and those were supposed to be your two guys who you can lean on more than anybody in this bullpen, Mark Leiter Jr. and Tyson Miller. Tyson Miller was a guy I said a few days ago, that's the guy I want closing. Well, not if he's given up 450-foot bombs, grand slams, um, but the Cubs were able to battle through it. it. It felt like early in the game, the Cubs were squandering so many chances offensively that they would definitely blow this game. Then they opened it up. They give five runs right back on a grand slam, four runs, Jorge Soler, bomb, and you think, man, they're going to blow this one again. If they blow this, the season's over. You just can't come back from th these devastating losses day after day. But the Cubs decide not to opt for Hector Neris, who did not pitch two days ago. He was on good rest. Instead, they went to Colton Brewer. Colton Brewer made it a little bit exciting, two walks in the ninth, but he was able to secure the save the first of his career. He's the sixth different Cub to secure a save, and the Cubs win it 6-5. to five. It got a little dicey. It certainly got a little dicey as, uh, between Mark Leiter Jr., Tyson Miller, and Colton Brewer. Got to give some credit to Drew Smiley. He came in after Kyle Hendricks came out of the game, got the last out of the sixth, and then went and pitched the entire seventh, one, two, three. Um, so a good outing from Drew Smiley out of the bullpen. He, he's sort of becoming one of your more reliable pieces back there, and that, that's kind of my question for you all, is if Mark Leiter Jr., whose ERA is now up to 5-3-4 on the season, uh, is sort of leaving that circle of trust that Craig Council had him so firmly in earlier this season, and Tyson Miller's giving up homers. Hayden Wesneski has given up, I think, four home runs in his last eight innings. Um, that's way too much for a bullpen guy. 
Uh, you look at Hendricks, who might be back in the rotation now momentarily with Ben Brown and Jordan Wicks on the injured list. And, and so it leaves you to wonder who Hector Neris, obviously, blowing more saves than he isn't blowing as of late. It makes you think who could possibly currently be in the Cubs' circle of trust in terms of relievers. If you got six perfect innings from your starting pitcher and you had to get the seventh, eighth, and ninth, who would you turn to? Like, do, do you stick with Wesneski, Leiter, and Naris? I think the answer has to be no. All three of those guys are struggling mightily right now. Um, obviously, Keegan Thompson has put his name into that conversation, but he's currently on the paternity list, so you don't have him right now. Um, and it makes you like, do you go Colton Brewer seventh, Keegan Thompson eighth, Tyson Miller ninth, or Tyson Miller eighth, Keegan Thompson ninth? The, the options at this bullpen are so thin right now that I don't think that there's a, a right answer for a 7th, 8th, ninth, and high leverage situations. But that's my question of the day for you all. If, if you get you know six shutout from your starting pitching, who do you want to see out there in the 7th, 8th, and ninth? That's going to be something to keep our eyes on, especially Cubs off today, but they start a series with the Mets on Friday at 120. So we'll look forward to bringing that to you. Uh, Mick and I will be here tomorrow to – preview this series against the Mets and talk about any moves that may be made today during the off day. But hope you guys enjoy your off day. The Cubs have been a little bit of a scary team to watch. So enjoy your break from this team. Uh, but hopefully the Cubs can keep it rolling as they move uh, into a three game set with the Mets over the weekend. Mets are red hot. Cubs have won two in a row. Something's got to give and hopefully it results in a lot of go Cubs go this weekend at Wrigley. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and jump in the comment section, and hopefully we'll be talking to you guys soon after some more Cubs W's.